An awfully long time ago, I was applying to colleges. There were around seven colleges to which I wanted to go, and one of them had far too many requirements to apply, and I wasn't exactly known for giving out much in the way of scholarships. So I had six colleges to apply to. Naturally, I needed to take the SAT, the Standard Aptitude Test. There are a number of topics in the math SAT exam, but one of the less studied topics in school that shows up on the test is probability. Whether it was practice exams or the actual exams, there was always at least one probability question. Let's look at the question that got me into college. Here's how it read. Two dice are rolled. What is the probability that their sum is less than or equal to five? All right, so let's set forth and try to solve this problem. The probability of something is a number between 0 and 1 inclusive, or between 0% and 100% inclusive. And this question was requesting the numerical value. An event's probability is the number of ways that an event can occur divided by the total number of events that can occur within that system. For example, if a bag has two red marbles and three blue marbles, then the chance of selecting a red marble is two-fifths, since there are two red marbles you can select and five total marbles in the bag. All right, with this in mind, let's look more closely at the solution. First, we want to know how many total possibilities there are. Well, each die has six faces. At least, I think they each have six faces. We'll talk about that later. So on each of the two dice, six different faces can occur. So that's six from the first die in combination with six from the second die, making a total of six times six equals 36 possibilities on the two dice. Keep in mind that the smallest sum that can occur is two, and the largest sum that can occur is 12. By the pigeonhole principle, there must be some events that have duplicate results, since 36 is more than the number of different possibilities, which is 11. By the way, quick aside, the number of integers from 2 to 12 is 11, not 10. Taking 12 minus 2 only accounts for the jumps from one number to the next, not the actual numbers themselves. Go ahead and try counting the number of integers from 2 to 12 inclusive. It's 11. So there's 36 total possibilities and some overlap in results. Let's let there be two slots representing the result of each die. If the first die gets fixed at 1, we can let the second die vary from 1 to 6. With 1 and 1, the result is 2. And with 1 and 6, the result is 7. So we add one possibility for the sums 2 through 7. Then we just do the same thing, but increase the first die to 2. This adds one possibility for the sums 3 through 8. And then if we keep doing this, we add one possibility for 4 through 9, and then 5 through 10, and then 6 through 11, and finally 7 through 12. So we end up with this bell curve shape, where 2 and 12 are rare, and 7 is much more common. To solve the problem, we just need to pluck out how many ways the sum can be 2, 3, 4, or 5. By my count, that's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which equals 10. So there are 10 ways to roll a sum less than or equal to 5 and 36 total possibilities. So the probability of rolling a sum less than or equal to 5 is 10 divided by 36 or 5 divided by 18. Okay, cool. The problem solved. But if you read the title of this video, you might be wondering, well, what happened? For every college to which I applied, they requested a written essay that would convince them why I should be able to attend their college. For every college, I made sure to add one small section that related to this SAT math question, and that is a critique. That's correct. I critiqued this question in my college essay. I wrote about how the verbiage frustrated me. Keep in mind that my field of study is game development, so you might be able to imagine how much is left to the imagination by saying two dice are rolled. Are these dice six-sided dice? Are the dice fair and equally weighted? Are the dice regular polyhedra? Are the sides numbered 1 to 6? Heck, are they even whole numbers on each side? The amount of information left up to interpretation is so large that I couldn't help but air my grievances. Every college to which I applied had accepted my application, and after sending in my college applications, I asked each college which part of my essay was the most valuable. Every single one of them said, your ability to critique. Critique is critical, not just in game development, but in every field. 
In every form of work you do, you will be working with people, whether they're your coworkers, bosses, employees, or end users. Every form of work will necessitate giving and receiving critique. And you might be wondering why I mentioned receiving critique specifically. That can't be challenging, can it? Well, I would argue that receiving critique, at least correctly that is, is even more challenging than giving critique. Receiving critique properly means understanding that your work is never perfect, ever. Receiving critique requires skills in active listening and communication and is driven by a desire to ask questions and improve. Critique is not a simple YouTube video, it's a dialogue. It needs people to interact in order to be fully realized. So to make this video the absolute best it can be, I want you to critique this video itself. Make sure you start your comments with critique in capital letters so I know you got to this point in the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.